This blade, I start off with heat treated to 60 Morocco. And it's been surface ground and it's totally flat. And I even finished the little ends, polish up some of the stuff that you gotta do later anyway. So it's perfectly flat. It has to be flat when you put it in this clamp or else your grind's not gonna be straight. If it's leaning in, you're gonna cut too much of the point. So very important, flat material. And I like grinding full hard because it's crisper and it's easier to control. Yeah. Putting this blade in here, these back screws are to keep this clamp equal. The space, you don't want to pinch it like that. You want that clamp to come together with that blade in a flat manner. I'll stay above behind the chaw, and then I'll go to snugging, tight equal. Kind of. All right, that's red reference point. So let's go up here at the back of this and zero it where you got a flat surface on that arm. I've got it done. Now I want this 90 degrees, so it'll have to be zeroed like I just zeroed the other. That's close enough. I mark the center line of the blade that I'm going to grind. I put the pair of railroad tracks down the center with a scribe. That way it keeps me knowing where the center of that blade is while I'm... And I'll clamp that blade with my chawl out front like that. And it doesn't have to be... Since we're going to grind a straight, straight edge like a Warren Cliff, I'm going to stick it straight out. So and these don't have to be just terribly tight. It's going to hold because of the carbide. I drop her down on my adjusted, I've already adjusted the angle. So I'll lock her in place and do away with this. And then I want to make sure these standoffs are holding against this because I don't want any flex. I'm going to leave this now and go to a 220 and show you how to put the how to put the plunge in. You can do it with a 400 to 220. Notice I'm putting pressure on this side of the belt. I want to cut the edge. I don't very seldom. This is going to cut much quicker, so don't go straight through every time. It's thinner and it's going to cut quicker. Back here where it's thicker is where you need to be working. See how it's developing? Now I'll go. I want to straighten this stop up, so I'm going, I'm going into it now. I got a little bit of flex taking place here. I got to get it out because it can cause you an issue. See how that's pushing in there now and getting straight to the other side. I got it where I want it there. Now my thickness of blade is going to be a little thick at the bottom, but what I do there is I turn back into it. That one from the 220 to this 800 or whatever it is, it's 30 microns. One pass. I've got to clean that plunge just a little bit. So there we go. Not hot enough that you can't rub your hand over it. We just finished with the 30 micron. I will go to a 15 and then a 9 and then to the buffer. So we will have used five belts.
This again is a 15 micron, which is about 1200 grit. See it already getting rid of the scratches with that. Alright, we'll take it to the other side. I'm going to come in behind it, that bump right there. I want to make a swedge, but I want to begin before the hump so it blends and looks really cool. We just follow that knife blade. There's the tip. You can begin seeing what's happening. See that? See that accent swedge? And of course, if you repeat the other side, you can bring it on down a little more. Bring it clear into the point. Now that dresses it up. Always stay beneath the axle when you're push when you're into this. Because it, you, if this kicks, if it grabs it, you want it to go under the wheel. You're up here, it can spin around and go into you. So always edge down and come in here and work it while it's still in the clamp in case we got to go back and get any scratches out. Also blue, blue, it's made in Japan. It's about 20,000 grit and it cleans up clouds like you wouldn't believe. That's all we're gonna do. There's your finish.